Hello, my name is Kevin Eskumjur. I am going to be discussing the chronic changes induced by sulfur mustard vapor in the skin. Sulfur mustard is a chemical warfare agent, primarily used during World War I, and even recently used during the Syrian Civil War and in Mosul, Iraq in 2015 and 2017. It is an investigating agent as well as a DNA alkylating agent affecting the eyes, respiratory tract, and the skin, which I'll be discussing about, where it causes second degree burns and blister formation, as shown in the image on the right. There's currently no treatment against sulfur mustard exposure, therefore it's important to research it to develop proper countermeasures against it. We utilize a Gottingen mini pig model where we expose sulfur mustard vapors to the backs of three month old Gottingen mini pigs. And then 48 hours after sulfur mustard exposure, skin was debrided for seven days with wet to wet saline gauze soaps. The animals are then sacrificed nine, 14, 28, and 60 days post SM. And then full thickness skin biopsies were prepared for histology and immunostochemistry. On the left is our histological stains that we used, which is an H&E stain and a trichrome stain, trichrome being a counter stain to H&E, utilizing a dye called aniline blue, which stains type 1 and type 3 collagen in the dermis, a royal blue color. And then in the left, you see a control skin with H&E stain, a normal stratum corneum, a normal epidermis, and a normal dermis. And then you see sulfur mustard exposure from day 9 through day 60, a scab formation, neoepidermis formation, as well as inflammatory infiltrate found in the dermis, which can be even more readily seen in the trichrome stain. On the right is our measurements of the inter epidermal thickness, where here's a REIT, here's a REIT. We took measurements in between, 20 measurements from each animal, and we saw a significant increase from day 9, 14, and 28 compared to control. And then by day 60, we saw levels similar to control. We then utilized an immunostochemistry technique where we looked at proliferating cell nuclear antigen, a protein and a marker for cell proliferation. In the control skin, we see contiguous expression along the basal layer of the epidermis as indicated by the star. And then by day nine through day 28, an upregulation in both the basal layer and the super basal layer as indicated by the arrow. And by day 60, it looks very similar to control, basically approach control. The next protein we looked at was epithelial cadherin, also known as ECAD, a marker of cell to cell adhesion and communication. In the left, in the control, you see a constitutive expression along all the layers of the epidermis of ECAD. And then by day nine, you see an overall downregulation of ECAD in all layers of the epidermis, especially along the basal layer, as indicated by the arrows. By day 14 and day 28, we see an overall upregulation compared to day nine, but still overall downregulated compared to control. And by day 60, we see it's approaching control, but still slightly downregulated. And then finally, and in conclusion, these data indicate that sulfur mustard alters epithelial cell adhesion and proliferation, causing delayed wound repair, and enhancing the wound healing process may be an effective route for developing sulfur mustard countermeasures in the future.